I went to go see the Gran Turismo movie last week, and it was... fine. I have a love-hate relationship with video game movie adaptations. I think that when they're done right, they act as a love letter to the game, and it's a treat for fans both new and old. But when they're done wrong, you get shit like this. For one of these projects to be successful, I think something you need is a series with recognisable characters to bring to the big screen, and a defined storyline to adapt for a two hour movie. And Gran Turismo doesn't have either of these. The movie's definitely more of an underdog story about how a video game enabled someone to prove everyone wrong rather than a movie about the game itself. I don't have access to a ton of movie footage since it just came out, so I'm just going to use random racing games I have and throw in some trailer footage as and when needed. I haven't reviewed a lot of movies, but I am looking to get better at it. I think I'm going to try to do this more often if you're interested in hearing my lukewarm takes on things other than video games. I want to push the boat out starting by reviewing this movie that's about a video game. The movie follows Jan, a kid from Cardiff who spent his whole life playing the state-of-the-art cutting-edge racing simulator Gran Turismo 7 on his Sony PlayStation 5 now available at a store near you. And if you haven't realised by now, this movie is filled to the brim with product placement. It's somehow more on the nose than the cup noodle quest from Final Fantasy XV. Then, if you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest, freshest ingredients, what do you get? The ultimate flavour experience. Jan is given the opportunity to compete in the biggest races in the world using the skills he gained by being a gamer. With the glass ceiling broken, all the oppressed groups shall prosper, especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. The main characters are Jan, Orlando Bloom, and David Harbour. Going into the movie, I didn't think the setup sounded horrible. It could potentially be a nice story seeing someone overcome the odds, but my god, the writing is abysmal. It's full of buzzwords that out-of-touch writers thought would appeal to the audience, and there isn't a point in the movie where we aren't constantly reminded that a gamer is becoming a professional race car driver. Jan falls kind of flat as a protagonist, he just spends the entire movie either telling everyone that he's spent thousands of hours racing these cars, and stalking his love interest on Instagram, who he's maybe spoke to for five minutes. There's a moment at the start of the movie where he's talking to her, and she asks him about his racing game, and he immediately says, actually, it's more of a state-of-the-art racing simulator. Bro, I was crying laughing. David Harbour plays the jaded engineer who gave up racing but he's persuaded by Orlando Bloom to take a chance on some epic Fortnite gamers. Bless his heart, David Harbour is trying his hardest to bring some life to the movie, but the dialogue he's given is god-awful. His journey throughout the movie consists of gamers are losers who can't drive and should touch grass. Oh wow, this kid can drive. I used to be a driver like you until I crashed. You're gonna be one of the best racers in the world. Oh yeah, Orlando Bloom is here too. He says that he wants to give these kids a chance to prove that they have what it takes but then he doesn't want Jan to do it because he's awkward in front of the camera, despite the fact that he's proven himself to be the best driver there. If you didn't want someone who was socially awkward, maybe you shouldn't have chosen a group of people who literally spend all of their time trying to perfect their scar in a video game. I'm not seeing enough movement! The movie is also full of classic cliches that everyone loves. All of the other races automatically hate the main character because he's an outsider. The mentor is scarred from a previous experience, but the main character is able to break through his heart of stone, the main character's family doesn't believe in his dream and tells him he should be more like his brother. And the classic, my dad doesn't get video games and wants me to play sports instead. And speaking of Jan's parents, he tells his mum that he's being flown to Vienna and her reaction pretty much boils down to, oh well, that's nice. Can someone please react to the fact that your son's about to be put in a life or death situation going 200 miles an hour? On the plus side, I thought the cinematography was actually pretty good. The effects look really nice, and I thought the sound design of the cars was particularly good. Although the sequences where Jan shifts between being in his car and being in his bedroom with his PlayStation and his Logitech gamer wheel were kind of jarring. I went to see the movie with a friend who's more into cars than I am, and he said that some aspects of the actual driving were a bit unrealistic. Somehow, the main character gets a random speed boost and easily overtakes people, despite the fact that they're all racing in the exact same car. And there's another racer who's just really over the top with how much of a dick he is. He just does shit that you wouldn't dream of getting away in actual races, like actively trying to ram him off the road. Honestly, Gran Turismo just felt like a nothing movie for me. It didn't make me want to play the video game, which is definitely the aim of the film. But if you love cringy movies, I think you'll have a good time. There was a dad who brought his son to see this and they sat on the row in front of me, and I just couldn't stop laughing for the entire film. 
He gave me a really dirty look as they walked out, so I'd like to offer my sincerest apologies if I ruined your movie experience. But in all fairness, you did bring him to see the Gran Turismo movie. If anything, this just makes me want a movie based in the late 80s, where they make someone who's really good at Punch-Out fight a prime Mike Tyson. It's a 4 out of 10. Drink every time someone says something along the lines of gamers can't become real racers or we're proving that these gamers can become racers. You will see God. Thank you.